Welcome to the first episode of Before You Play in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, where I will be teaching you the very basics of each playable character in the game. In this series, we will be covering the character's basic kit, their skills, cooldown and durations, their openers and combos, as well as some tips and tricks for your convenience. Each episode, we will talk about different characters until we cover them all. We will have a separate video for the best in slots and best build for each character soon. Without further ado, let's start off with our beloved Dancho, Ran, and Jita. The MC has a unique kit where they rely heavily on your arts combo. Your arts combo is visible on the right side of your character. This can stack up to 4 times and it always starts with 1. Your arts combo stack gives bonus potency to your skills, both for offensive and supportive skills. The higher your stack count is, the stronger the potency of your skills. Arts combo can be acquired by landing combo finishers, charge attacks, and link attacks. Using up a skill will consume your whole arts combo stack, however, whenever you use a skill, your arts combo will start flashing. This flashing is your small window to cast another skill, and your skill will still have the same arts level as the one that is flashing. Once the flashing stops, it will return to arts level 1. The time window can be increased as you further upgrade your MC's mastery tree. Another unique skill for MC is that they can use charge attacks. The MC's secondary attack is a chargeable attack that can be charged up to two levels, which can be distinguished by the plus sign on your ability name or the flashing light on your blade. Both charge 1 and charge 2 gives 1 stacks of arts combo. Your charge attack can be chained after your combo finishers, which can be useful to sleep in a powerful charge attack with faster charging time. Next in line would be everything about skills. The MC got the most amount of skill with a total of 16, with 7 offensive skills and 9 defensive skills. Let's start with the offensive skills for now. First would be Rake and Live, a ranged single hit attack with a fast cooldown of 15 seconds, a decent quick damaging skill that can be useful for some builds. The next skill is Armor Break. A lunging strike that inflicts enemies hit with death reduction debuff of 10% that lasts for 15 seconds. The death reduction increases by 5% per arts level with a max of 25% at arts level 4. This skill has a cooldown of 45 seconds. The next damaging skill would be Decimate, a 5 hit attack that can hit anyone in the area. This skill is a good damage skill due to it being a multi-hit attack. However, the downside is that the hit of the skills are scattered, making it possible to hit the non-vulnerable area of a monster. The skill has a cooldown of 30 seconds. The next skill is Rain of Arrows, a 4-hit skill that deals decent amount of damage and inflicts enemies hit with attack reduction of 10% that lasts for 15 seconds. The attack reduction increases by 5% per arts level with a max of 25% at arts level 4. This skill has a 45 seconds cooldown. The last damage skill we have is Overdrive Surge. This skill is a strong single hit kick that deals a lot of stun value which has the ability to insta-stun the enemy if you have higher stun stats. The cooldown of these skills would be 30 seconds. Moving on to the other offensive buffs that are non-damage dealing. Rage a party wipe buff that gives attack boost of 15% with a max of 30% at arts level 4. The buff lasts for 15 seconds and the cooldown of the skill is 1 minute. The next skill would be Miserable Mist, an AoE that inflicts enemies hit with both attack and death reduction of 10%, which increases by 5% per arts level with a max of 25%. The debuff lasts for 15 seconds and the skill cooldown is 1 minute. Now that we are done with the offensive skills, let's head on to the defensive skills. First up is Phalanx. It is a very strong defensive buff for the whole party as this skill gives a huge damage cut of 40% at max of 70% depending on your arts level. The buff lasts for 15 seconds and nearby allies also receive the buff. The circle is as huge as the miserable mist area, so be sure to cast it near your allies as it's not far too wide. The skill's cooldown is 1 minute and 30 seconds. Next is Panacea, 
an AoE heal that can heal you and your allies instantly. The healing potency increases per art's level, and the cooldown of this skill is 50 seconds. Next up is Veil. This is a party-wide buff that gives debuff immunity to allies and the duration of the skill depends on your arts level, with 10 seconds at arts level 1 and 30 seconds at arts level 4. The cooldown of this skill is 1 minute and 30 seconds. The next support skill will be Stall. A strong AoE slow useful to give more windows for you and your allies. Similar to Veil, the duration of the skill depends on your arts level with 3 seconds at arts level 1 and 5 seconds at arts level 4. The skill cooldown is 1 minute and 30 seconds. The next skill would be Clarity, an AoE buff that gives regen to allies and removes any debuff they have. The heal potency of regen depends on your arts level and the regen buff lasts for 20 seconds. The skill has a cooldown of 40 seconds. Next is Dispel. This skill deals damage that scales from your arts level, while removing any buffs the enemies have. This is very useful for enemies who have annoying self buffs and this skill has a cooldown of 1 minute. The next one is Revive, an AoE skill that instantly revives any downed allies in the circle and heals them afterwards. The potency of your heal depends on your arts level and the cooldown of the skill is 3 minutes and 20 seconds. Followed by the second to the last skill, Conduction. This skill donates a portion of your SPA gauge party wide. Your arts level determines the amount you'll be sharing to your allies. This skill is good to use if you can gain SBA gauge very fast. The skill cooldown is 1 minute and 20 seconds. Lastly, we have Substitute. This skill grants self-defense buff of 20% up to 50% at arts level 4. At the same time, you will be absorbing all the damage your allies take. That means that you will take damage in their place and they will remain unscast. This skill is a very good supportive skill for a tank MC. Both the damage absorb and death increase last for 10 seconds and this skill have a cooldown of 50 seconds. Now that we are done with MC skill, let's move to their combos and openers. For reference in this part, I'll be referring to square or left click as basic attack and triangle or right click as special attack. Doing combo with the MC is very versatile as you have different selections on what to execute. The first combo you can do is the standard combo for damage, triple basic attack followed by special attack. This combo is good when you want to deal good damage while staying open for evasive maneuvers and repositioning. Next is the double combo, where you do double basic and then double special attack. This is a long combo to execute due to the slow animation of the special attack, regardless it gives out a decent amount of damage, and use this when you are safe from being attacked. For building art gauge, the thrust combo is good. Single basic followed by double special is a very fast combo. It is quick and efficient in building up your arts level, however your damage will be significantly lower. Lastly, the long combo. 4 basic attack followed by special attack. This combo is an extended version of the standard. It gives more damage and it gives 2 arts level in exchange for a longer execution. And it's a good alternative to double combo. For aerial combos, you can do triple basic followed by special. This will give an arts level. Keep in mind that you can chain up a charge special attack at the end of the combos mentioned for additional damage and additional arts level. For openers, there are different ways to open up a combo to an enemy. However, the most efficient way would be the thrust opener. To execute this, do one basic attack followed by a special attack for the gap closer move. After the thrust, follow in 2 basic attack and then another special attack. This will give an instant arts level 3. If you have a wider window, you can continue this opener with a charge special attack. If you land it, you will get an instant arts level 4. This opener is good to reach arts level 4 easily and got a good coverage due to it being a thrust attack. For the last opener, although it's not advisable, you can also approach an enemy while holding your special attack. The downside of this, however, is that you only gain one arts level and has a very slow startup. Now for the last part, tips and tricks. 
you ever find yourself far from the enemy, you can always engage back by charging your special attack while approaching them. Do keep in mind that you are slower while charging during the first charge, but you regain movement speed afterwards. Another gap closer move is the thrust attack, which is basic attack followed by special attack. Another thing to keep in mind is that charging your special attack after a combo is much faster compared to plainly charging it. Try not to engage using charge attack as it will take you some time before you can fully charge it to 2. When your arts combo is flashing and your arts level is not 4, you can stuck it further through combos and link attacks until it reaches 4. However, it will still reset to 1 when the flashing is done. With that being said, you cannot pre-stack your arts level during the time window as it will still reset to 1 once it stops. And if you ever forget your charge stack, you can press and hold your skill button and it will show on your right side of your character. That marks the end of the in-depth guide for our MC. It's quite a long video and I blame all those skills our MC have. I mean, come on, 16 skills? Surely you can add more than that, right? Please no. With a lot of choices on skills, the captain is capable of having multiple builds and a lot of potential with team synergies. I do hope I help you understand Grand Ninjita better in this video. I will be talking about Catalina in the next episode so make sure to subscribe to be updated on the next guides that I will be uploading. That will be all for this episode and thank you for watching, see you later.